um, to, to, to work with that provider. And we are already working with that provider at our 990 Polk development, which is at the edge of the Tenderloin, and is also a senior building. So our management team knows how to work with their services team. Does that answer your question? And so what's the timeline for the 350 yeah, Ellis? So 350 Ellis, the schedule. Oh, excuse me, before you get on to that, can I ask you to clear, you said something about condensation of so, the of those units? I'm, I'm glad you clarified or asked me to clarify. So we create a condominium, but it's just a two unit condominium. Oh, so see. one condominium is all of the residential I and see. the other condominium is the so commercial. So like tenants in common? Does it, I mean, well, how do you do that legally? It's like, how many? It's like it's what's 80, called a 90, 80, 80 units. No, no, no. So there, there is not. There's only two condominium units. It's what's called a commercial condo. Oh. So it, there aren't like 89 individual condos because there's no. We have no like zero intention of ever selling them. So it's a commercial condo. Part it's of a commercial is the ground floor, and the other is right. So basically, it's the first two floors are basically the house belong to the housing authority, and the upper floors basically belong to. Um, a limited partnership that TDC controls. So and then there's easements because. So where are the two condos? The first two floors? Or? Yeah, so the, the condominium just means that there's one entity that owns a portion of the building and has, and the financing encumbers that. And then so there's which another. Is that on? So the first half of the first floor and all of the second floor belongs to the housing authority. So where's the house? Well, there's just that, that's what I'm trying okay, to tell so you. The so condo the, is like the draw a line. Is the housing. Yes. Uh, yes. It's, it's a business. Okay. Right? I just want to make sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. The the owner of that is the housing authority. Are there are there any more questions about 432? Uh, yeah. Um, well, you mentioned how long it's going to take. So, um, how many people will be displaced, or going off? Are you doing floors at a time, or are you? Uh... We're doing floors at a time. We're doing two floors at a time. Okay. And so, um, what we did is in the first phase. Um, I actually don't know the exact numbers. I could follow up with you, but some people move from 430 Turk to Rosa Parks or in with family members, but there were very few. What we did was we worked with the housing authority to hold units vacant so that there are a number of vacancies already in the building. And so we, for the most part, what's happening is that people are moving within the building. So one piece of feedback we heard, so for the first phase, 430 Turk, which is already under construction, what we've done is we've taken, we've consolidated the vacancies on one or two floors and we set those units up, we call them housekeeping units or hotel units. So we bought furnishings for those units. And so the tenants that are relocating, we're taking all their stuff and moving it into storage. And then they're like staying in a furnished apartment. And then when they move back to the unit, we'll bring their stuff back. We got feedback from tenants that are in phase two that some people would prefer to take all their furnishings from their unit to the temporary unit and then back. So for phase two, we are offering that. For phase one, it was kind of already done, and we actually didn't really get pushback about that. But um, in response to concerns raised by people living in, in phase two, particularly the Clementina Towers, which is in Soma, but that's another one that we're working on, we adapted our relocation plan. So again, this is specifically senior disabled, it's gonna maintain <coughs> that status on the building? So, or is that going to change? <clears throat> yeah. Um, it will. It will stay. There was a lot of discussion. What do you define as senior? Oh, it's a good question. These are HUD financed buildings, so HUD's definition of senior is 62 and over. The state's definition is there's. If we had financing that was only from the state, it would be 55 and over. But these are these have federal funds, so it's 62 and over. But if people disabled. It can be of any age. age. It can be of any oh, age. Just want to make that clear. Yes. And so, more or less across the ones in our portfolio, about a third of the units are, are occupied by folks with disabilities and about two thirds are senior. And our, um, I, I guess the question that I was originally gonna say is, are you building to the code of the state or the city when you do the rehabs? We are building to city code. So these are rehabs. So you guys may be familiar um, with the Mayor's Office of Disability. So particularly those of you that are advocates for the disabled. So their 
with new construction, you have to follow state and city code, and there's, you know, it's, everything's really good, right? With rehab, it's more challenging because you're dealing with existing structures and, like, you know, your elevators may be only this big in the shaft, and the corridors may be only so wide. So there was a lot of, um, you know, negotiation and meeting with the mayor's office of disability to resolve the, the how much accessibility improvements would be made. But I will say that in our in the scoping of the rehabs for ourselves and also for the city, which is you know a huge partner in this, the number one goals were seismic and accessibility. And so one of the things for us that's been important is trying to get as much kind of unit improvements as we can because we recognize that for a lot of people living in these buildings, if there's an earthquake and they you know live, they'll appreciate that. And if they themselves or their friends have an access, you know, have a need for accessibility, they'll appreciate that. But for many people, they'll you know, have had the inconvenience of being displaced, and you know, it might not feel like the building is actually that different, even though we've poured all this money in. So we are, um, what we've done is we've gone unit by unit and evaluated particularly kitchens and bathrooms to see where we need to upgrade fixtures and flooring and appliances. Yes? Okay people in wheelchairs and short people. Uh, okay, I live across the street and it's privately owned, so it's, it's not an issue with you guys. Right. But I wanna ask if there's an analogous kind of thing. When we got everything changed and rehabbed and you know new flooring, everything, they gave us cabinets that you need to be six feet tall okay. to use. I mean, I, I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, this is a kind of a, this is kind of a non-starter when you, you can't get to your cap, you kitchen really cabinets. Yeah. Just a good point. Yeah. yeah, so I, I have to confess I'm not familiar enough with the details of the design to know how high those uh -huh. are, but I can certainly, you know, It take was that like they were back. built, they were built for their, you know, my, do my daughter and my granddaughter, they're all tall people. Right. You know, I mean, but I'm saying a lot of us are short or, you know, otherwise, to say, you know, otherwise right. challenged. <laughs> that, that also happened at the rehab of the Alexander. They put the uh, uh, wash machines on top of each other, and the seniors, oh, the people okay. could not uh, reach the top ones, and, uh, and, and uh, they didn't get, they're just trying to cram them all in there, but they didn't understand this is a disability, this is a, a incorrectly uh, done. Yeah. And so all he did was put one um, that was uh, uh, accessible on the, on the ground. So uh, yeah. you should have done maybe multiple ones on the ground, uh, ground floor to uh, to make them accessible. One. So it's, it's, somebody kind of needs to do almost a walk to make sure. Yeah, no, I, d I definitely hear you. And I think we have as a, to say, like as a nonprofit industry community, have tended to do the stackers to save space. But I hear what you're saying. I don't actually know what the plan is in these buildings, but I will take a look. And if there's an opportunity, it's probably too late at 4:30 turf, but there might be an opportunity. And then, of course, my pet peeve has always been because uh, we only need to deal with this at the uh, uh, an opening so that I may attend. I go well. How much does the tenant have to pay for laundry, pay phone, and all the other things? that they take them all out, the pay phones? Uh, do you have to pay more for the uh, any other additional things? And where does the money go? Does the money go to the tenants association? Does it go to the activities? Or right. does it go to management? And uh, you'd be surprised at the answers. So each, and it, each building seems to have a different answer, uh, but uh, technically, uh, uh, if it's a hub building, there should be funds being somehow figured in for activities yeah, well, I, versus just going to management. Right, so I can answer that for the HUD building. So for, and you're right, the HUD buildings do have special rules. And one of the things that TDC has been, you know, as a company, ideally we would like for, you know, we'd like generic. to fold, well, ideally, yeah, I mean, ideally, generic is like, doesn't sound very positive, but like, you know, we'd ideally like to have one experience for everyone living in our buildings and not some rules for these folks and some rules for those works. So that said, in our regular buildings, the, the laundry vending income, we, we do try to keep the rates as low as possible, and then the that income does come to support the property's operations. Um, for the RAD building, so 430 Turk and 350 Ellis, it is a legacy that will continue with the change in ownership that the laundry and vending income does go to the tenant association. 
And so there is a big, you know, sit there, everything is happening sort of on a big citywide conversation scale around exactly the mechanics of that. Um, and I'm not remembering all the numbers exactly, but I think in addition to the laundry and vending income going to the tenant associations, there's also a mandatory payment. I think it might be in two pieces, like 10 and 15 or 10 and 25, but there's some amounts that are basically part of our operating budget that we contribute to. I think a portion goes to the on-site tenant association, and then a portion goes to the citywide tenant associations, and then there's some there's some drama that's way bigger than TNEC around the citywide tenant association. So there's a little bit of like stuff in limbo right now about who to who to send the checks to the and like what yes. what's the who who's supposed to. So like right now they've asked TNEC to babysit how that money is used, which we don't want to do. That what about this? Is there interest on security deposits? Because that's the other one that's always been a pet peeve down there. Oh, there should be. I don't know why there wouldn't be. Well, there's not anything in the TNEC building. Huh. Uh, See, so I mean, it's the problem uh, when a new, a new management comes over, and uh, uh, at one point there was, then there isn't, and they, when they rewrite the leases, they take it out. So uh, uh, I'm concerned about that when uh, there should be interest be given back to the uh, tenants uh, on their security deposits on a yearly basis. That money could actually go back to the tenants association. Uh, and again, you have the ability to Every time you start a new lease, which is yearly, you can make those changes so you don't have to, uh, you know, it could be, I'll advocate for all the buildings at this point. Okay. And it should be, because uh, you, you have on now creating all these additional tenant associations uh, um, for your TDC buildings. Right. And I don't know how they're funded just per se, but the thing is, uh, these are the demands that uh, tenants should be asking for, mm -hmm. and for some reason we're taken away uh, right. for whatever reason. And maybe they're not aware that they should be asking and, not, and they're not being given them. Okay. Um, as far as, you know, because uh, how can you give to a tenants association if there's no recognition that it even exists? Mm -hmm. uh, and who's controlling the banks or the, you know, how is there any control over it? Is, there, is it self sufficient? Uh, it's, you know, well, how can you call there's a tenant association not even self sufficient? Right. Um, I tried to incorporate at the Alexander the tenants association there. And the tenants couldn't get around the issue of incorporation. It wasn't a social club. It had to have function as a 501c3. Big difference between when you incorporate versus a social club. Right, right. So I, in the right. operation side, I don't actually no, know. No, no, no. But I, 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 can, I can take your but, comment back. Yeah. Um, but and but it's part of when you're restarting management and all that, the, how does tenants um, um, role as you know, a new uh, management company. Right, and, that. and that's coming up on the RAD projects because the tenant associations aren't 501c3s and it can be hard to establish a new 501c3 and so I think it's like, do we really need to require them to? And then if we don't, like what's the accountability? So uh, I think, anyway, I'll just leave yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's a can of worms, it probably is. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I, I appreciate There's a lot argue with uh, issues, but these are the issues that no, I. No, I, I appreciate having a real conversation rather than I don't need yeah. to come here to talk at you. So. <laughs> I okay, so thanks for not you, Jen. I didn't want to. Okay. Uh, yeah, since I, I, you we don't have another speaker. We yeah, well, you've been very generous with your time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's other. There's other. Okay. So 350. Sure. So 350L is a lot of the issues are the same as what we've just discussed. It's simpler in that if there is only one of that building, which is senior and disabled housing, it has 96 units in it. Um, we are working on permitting now. So it's going through the Mayor's Office of Disabilities Review right now. Um, and the plan is to start construction in the fall. The city is hoping for the closings to happen in August or September. We are guessing, you know, it's possible that that will slide into November again just because it's very complicated, all of the, the whole undertaking. Uh, the special thing about this project for, for us, I'm not sure how much it will affect you as community members, is that we are partnering on that development with Glide Community Housing as a joint venture. They were interested in being involved in that building because it is two doors down from their church. And as you're probably aware, they already own three other affordable housing developments in the neighborhood that serve families and single individuals. Um, and in that <coughs> building, Glide Community Housing provides 
um, social services and resident services itself at its three buildings and to the broader community. So Goliath Community Housing is going to be the service provider at 350 Ellis. So um, that is different from what I said about the other 430 Turk and the other buildings where we're keeping the existing provider in Northern California Presbyterian Homes and Services in place. Um, and Glide has been you know, really good to work with in the buildings that they own. They've developed a real sense of what they think their residents need. And they have really helped us advocate with the city. A little bit to your earlier question or point about 430 Turk. 350 Ellis, if any of you have been in that building, when you walk in, there's basically like a security desk in a big room and the washer dryers were on some other floor. And so basically we are doing a small expansion of that building into the parking lot in the back. Um, so we'll have a community room, we'll bring the washer dryers down to the ground floor. We'll have um, more offices again for management and services. Um, who owns the parking lot? Hmm? Who owns the parking lot? Um, it, it's owned, right now it's owned by the housing authority. It's behind the building. Okay. Is that both to the side? <coughs> Is it also on the side uh, between, between your I don't the know who owns that. So there's, 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 there's a parking lot back, and so you're extending it to the parking lot. So right. So that is one um, thing we are. Can I again rough for a second? Um, this is now the third time I've had to go to the door in front. Um, there's a chair there because the door stays locked because it's offices. And so when people leave, they're locking everybody out from coming in, and I don't know if we're losing people because of that. I just want people to be aware of that uh, the police doesn't allow us to unlock the door, and uh, this is now the third time I've had to go out there because we might be losing people or not be able to come in because the, they can't access the, the meeting. Sorry to interrupt. No, 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 but it's okay. It, it's becoming now a little. I pain. hear you. I hear you. So I guess the story is when you leave, leave the chair there. I'll try to tell you my notes, which is the <coughs> Are there any other questions around 350 Ellis? Do you have any questions about 350 Ellis? So, so the tenant, since you're saying there's our housing authority parking lot, uh, so who, 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 who the, the tenant's rent spot, or is that all for, for the <coughs> staff, the parking lot? That, those spots have been available to tenants. So that is a, that is probably one of the bigger issues that we are working with the current management and tenants about now, figuring out who parks there. Um, is that we usually, because we used to uh, at other properties, they used to get a fee to uh, park? Or I'm actually not sure how it works. I would imagine that the housing authority probably don't pay a fee, or if they do pay a fee, I mean, I think their total housing payment is can only be 30% of their income. So I. I'm just talking it's extemporaneously, but I kind of can't imagine that they would then pay extra for parking. Park. I don't think that would be allowed. Okay. So are you encourage us to bring cars into the neighborhood because that would be the only place we have the parking that won't get the mall <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Because that, I mean, that's the problem. We're losing all our parking down here, and it's uh, people don't get it. keep on losing all the parking lots, well then uh, we'll, where will the uh, parking be? And then we're also losing a lot of the uh, street parking on top of that, too, we'll decide to remove. Yeah. Right, right. No, I understand it's the challenge. I mean, when I first moved here, my husband wanted to live in the Tenderloin, and part of why I didn't think it was feasible was because we had a car. And you can park your car overnight, yeah, and get but you've got to move it. <laughs> if you don't yes. have to drive to work at 9 a.m. every day, it doesn't really work. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's, uh, Ellis is a two-way uh, street, that, that, that direction? Yeah. I because it used to be one way. No, it's oh, one, way. one way. It's one way there. It's, it's one way going to the next block. West. The next yeah. block. Okay, because I don't drive, so that's why. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Because I mean, all these things impact. Uh, you know, when you, when these changes make happen. Uh, yeah. Uh, because uh, you know, I. But it is in the plan to do it. Yeah, it's kind of in the plan. It to is. Do it's all. a phase. Yeah, it's a phase. Yeah. 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 yeah, and, and of course, then the real issue is they want to start <laughs> putting parking lanes. Uh, they want to start uh, putting uh, bicycle lanes, which I we, we, the streets are only so much <clears throat> wide. So where would the bicycle lanes be? And we don't need the bicycles on the sidewalk. I mean, you know, this is probably already senior disabled. I mean, we already have right. a lot highest uh, um, population of senior disabled, and they seem to utilize uh, the uh, sidewalks uh, to to go down instead of the uh, uh -huh. the streets. Okay. Um, but I mean, because your population is um, 
Okay. Uh, is there any other questions about this project? Or I just have a very general yes. team.